Hey folks, Mika here from the m and team back with our latest picks for the month of September. Hey, listen! You know, I loved the little bait and switch of the trailer for this game. It starts off with Link facing Ganon and you're like, yeah, okay, new Zelda game, woo. But then all of a sudden, Link disappears into this crack in space-time, and then Zelda is the focus. That's right, it's an actual modern Zelda game with Zelda as the protagonist. You'd think the adventure would be easy, right? She is the princess and all. But that doesn't seem to be the case. I mean, Zelda is here in the dungeon at the start. We also kinda see her sneaking around the castle guards. Why so? Well, to be honest, I don't quite know. It might be because the king disappeared when she got back to the castle. Or maybe there's another will in the foot. Either way, it's up to Zelda this time to solve the anomalies that are happening in and around Hyrule. And unlike Link, who relied on his courage to do so, Zelda quite aptly focuses on her wisdom. The fairy try gives her the ability to make copies or echoes of items she comes across, and the ability to bind herself to objects, allowing Zelda to move them or move with them. Honestly, this kind of blew my mind. Like, hey, you need to cross a gap to get to a chest? Just make echoes of water to swim across. Or make an echo of a bad enemy to glide across. You need to traverse a cavern with blowing winds? Make a trampoline and jump over them. Or better yet, block the wind with a rock. The possibilities seem endless and you can feel that same sandbox and creative nature of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom in this game as well. Whether it's the mechanics, the layouts of the menus, the fact that you're doing side quests and have different appearances, or even the smoothie system, which is reminiscent of the cooking systems of the earlier games, there's so much in this game's preview that has me excited for Echoes of Wisdom. I do want to talk about it more, but hey, this is a list and we have other games. So... From its humble roots as a VR game, to charming everyone on release of the PS5, Astrobot is getting their own complete adventure. I know, I know. In this day and age, we all expect Sony to be releasing the blockbuster $200 million games with the story and their graphics. But it's nice to go back to PlayStation's roots and actually get a high-budget mascot platformer instead. Something which we often see done more innovatively in the indie scene these days. Astrobot, however, might prove to be no exception as you now have over 80 levels to once again find your scattered robot friends in. As you run around these levels, you're introduced to new gimmicks, like this frog punching club which you can use to grapple and swingshot with, in addition to the punching I mean. On Astro's back are also these new little characters, or as I like to call them, backpack buddies, who seemingly give Astro abilities like boosting and inflating into a balloon to progress. The game of course has the obvious showcase of the DualSense controller too. Whether it's wind, rain, or even walking and blasting off into the cosmos, I always get a sense of joy when this feature is used well. And that's really my main takeaway from Astro's previous experiences. With its combination of PlayStation history and ever-changing mechanics, I couldn't help but smile from ear to ear when I played them. And I'm looking forward to again being giddy with excitement when Astrobot releases soon. Pivoting from cute mascots, in Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2, you play the role of a genetically enhanced super soldier, one Demetrian Titus. Due to the events in the previous game, he starts off demoted from his previous rank and with some friction among his allies. However, he is given a chance to prove himself by defending the planet Avarax against the Tyranids, an insect-like alien species with a hive mind hell-bent on consuming everything in their path. And what a sight it is to see Titus jump into these hordes of enemies on screen. Honestly, I'm surprised that whatever machine these trailers are working off on are not exploding. Thankfully, you're not alone here, and other friends can even join you in this campaign. And that might actually be the one thing I'm most excited about. The co-op element of standing together and mowing down enemy wave after wave. Other than the story campaign itself, you also have separate co-op missions, where you can jump in together with six archetypes each with unique weapons, abilities, and customization in play. Don't worry, for those of you who'd rather fight against each other, or the heretics in this case, you have the 3v3 PvP. I'm always a bit iffy for games like these with unlockable elements and customization. Hopefully, the developers won't take things too far of course, because honestly, I'm more than ready to jump into the grimdark future that I've only seen a drop of. 
Episode I guess, the DLC from Persona 3 Reload is something that I've been looking forward to since it was announced back in March, as this is the epilogue of this game. This DLC is also a remake which was first released as part of Persona 3 FES, the enhanced game of the original. Set a few weeks after the end of the base game, the former Seas members are preparing to leave the dome and enjoy a farewell dinner. However, they soon discover that the day keeps repeating, trapping them in a time loop where they can't escape. They are then attacked by a new robot named Metis, who claims to be Aegis' sister. The story focuses on the team's struggle to break free from this Groundhog Day-like scenario. Spoiler for the end of the base game, but I'm looking forward to knowing how the team copes with their grief due to the events of the ending. With Aegis being the MC, she now takes on the role of the leader and also has access to multiple personas. Metis assumes the role vacated by Aegis as she now has Aegis's moveset and her Theurgy move. The latest trailer was also teasing new music and two of the songs are already available on streaming platforms. I'm waiting to check these out in game as one of these may possibly be the new battle theme. The DLC offers nearly 30 hours of content and the trailer that was shown in Gamescom revealed that it includes a challenge battle where you can face off against Joker from Persona 5. Honestly, can't wait to fight him though. The best thing about the Ace Attorney series are the court cases you say? Objection! Allow me to introduce you to the Ace Attorney Investigations Collection, a series of games about investigating the crime and building a case starring Phoenix Wright's rival, Miles Edgeworth. I missed out the original Ace Attorney games when they first came out, but ever since I played the great Ace Attorney Chronicles, I've been in love with the series. The interesting mysteries, the colorful characters, the over-the-top reactions, and the tons and tons and tons of puns makes the series one that I fell in love with completely. Then I went on to play the game with our boy Phoenix Wright in them, and I was not disappointed. It was everything I liked taken to an even higher extreme. It was through these games that I came to know the eloquent and extraordinary Miles Edgeworth. So, when I heard that not only were there games where you get to play as him, but that these games were coming out repackaged for the modern audience, I was in. I can't wait to slip into the shoes of this brilliant man and unravel crimes of all sorts. These criminals expect some Phoenix rights, but I'm about to commit some Phoenix wrongs. And those are our picks for the month of September. But before you leave, here is our bonus round. Epic Mickey I'll be the first to admit that Epic Mickey getting a remaster surprised me. The game has you wandering around as Mickey in a magical model, which acts as a talent for old and outdated Disney characters, trying to right a wrong that Mickey inadvertently caused before. Though initially he set on going home after meeting with Oswald and older characters such as Horace, who were his friends, his goals change. You get this wonderful mishmash of characters and older Disney properties making for a very engaging, albeit more darker but very kingdom hardish setting. Unfortunately, as far as I recall, the gameplay is just pretty standard platformer, even with its mechanics of painting stuff and wiping away stuff with thinner. That said, considering just the fact that this is being remastered and there's a sizable number of people looking forward to this, here's Epic Mickey on our list. The plucky squire takes the childlike wonder of your yesteryears, takes it as inspiration, and makes it into a game. You play as the adventurer slash writer Jot, as he explores around in his storybook world, Ella Legend of the Zelda style. The villain of the game, the wizard Humgrump, apparently becoming aware that everyone is in a storybook, opts to cast Jot out of the book and change it, so that he will finally win. Now, having to traverse both the 3D world of the young owner's desk as well as any flat plane such as cups and strips of paper, Jot has to find a way to stop him. With a beautiful art style and playing in line with the children's storybook, tons of creativity and callbacks in tow, the Plucky Squire is one of those games poised to pluck at your heartstring. Evo Tinction is one of those rare games which delve into the stealth genre. Unlike most stealth games which have you hiding from guards, ninjas, and even aliens, this game has you content instead with a more automated set of adversaries. Set in a remote research facility, presumably in the future, you take control of one Dr. Liu as he tries to navigate the facility overrun by an infected AI, now programmed to kill humans with the many service robots under its control. There is no CQC in here, 
So instead, you use various gadgets to hack, infect, and even outmaneuver your enemies. And it is this fresh take on the genre and possible things we can or cannot do that intrigues me about this one. Renatus is a game that wears its inspiration on its sleeve. If this scene where the two protagonists are facing off against each other doesn't remind you of a similar fantasy set in a modern reality, then surely Yoko Shibomura's trademark music might jog your memory of it. Said in modern-day Shibuya, the wizards of this world are oppressed due to the fear they strike in the heart of its citizens. A bit odd considering they're wizards, but regardless, you play on one of two sides of this conflict. Either as the wizard Marin, seeking freedom, or the officer Sari, making sure no one steps out of line. The combat in this game revolves around, as I like to call it, your wizard and hooded stances. As a wizard, you can unleash your mana and full attack potential, while being hooded gives you time-stopping dodges and the ability to recover your expended mana. And you won't be switching between these two in combat alone, as being hooded is more than not required to interact with NPCs. While the game is no powerhouse, especially on the graphics side of things, I'm quite interested to see whether it will make a mark on Western audiences, especially with the surprising crossover with the Neo, The World Ends With You. Frostpunk 2 takes place 30 years after humanity has survived the apocalyptic blizzard from the first game. Not everything is hunky-dory though, as the climate is as cold as ever and resources are just as sparse. You, as the player, are put in charge in this situation. You kind of have to build the city, manage its citizens, and lead everyone to an age of prosperity as humans turn towards the oil industry. A thing which might be easier said than done, considering not everyone is on board with this vision. But it's your job to balance the various factions and find an acceptable solution. You could be one of those players willing to sacrifice some for the good of the many, or maybe you're a player who prefers to work on a united front. Either way, this game will challenge you on more than a few levels. And that's it for our September list. I'm just gonna add that in addition to this, PC players can also expect Final Fantasy 16, which was announced just as I was about to finish this list. So here's a reminder. In any case, let us know in the comments what you are gonna be playing. Here's Mika signing off for the month.